Hi everyone, welcome back. Yesterday we were taking a look at our lead, at adding fields and at changing page layouts. And we finished it with a bit of a weird note where for some reason my page just wasn't showing the changes that I've made to the page layout. So I left it for a little bit, came back the next day, uh, just opened up exactly the same thing and what do you know, it's, it's done. <laughs> so it looks like it was just taking a little bit of time to actually kind of process those changes and get them going. But thankfully we had done everything right, the steps were all correct, um, and we've got our beautiful kind of updated page layout here for our leads, and our lovely new field, which was our coffee order field. So today we're going to have a look at how we can actually convert the lead, what happens when you convert a lead, and how we can make sure that all the information from our lead goes properly to the right places on our account contact and opportunity. So if we're looking at our lead here, hopefully you can open up your example lead that you've been working on for our Jump In January challenge. In this lead, um, you can see it's in this open not contacted stage. Now we've got this path that we're working through on the lead. And the purpose of this path is really just to validate, is this a customer or potential customer that we want to continue working with? In other words, is this a prospective customer that is worth pursuing? We all sign up for freebies, we sign up for a free t-shirt or a 10% discount or something like that. Uh, and it's not actually representative of a, a bigger sale down the line. So we use leads as a way of qualifying customers that we might come back to later or customers that are really interested in buying and we should just be contacting them straight away. Uh, there's a really good potential here. So it's kind of this, this entry qualifying point. If you know the sales funnel, uh, which is where all of your potential customers come in the top and then slowly they get trickled down. This is that first layer in the funnel. So we're doing a bit of a bit of a cut of everyone who is not worth our sales reps time. But let's pretend that our test person here is. All right, maybe we put in some more information. So if you want to go ahead and, and fill in your lead a little bit more, um, I might say this person is head of marketing. Uh, we might give them an actual name. All right, I'm just going to say Bob Billy. You know, for my test people, I don't know why, I always like to give them the first letter for their first name and last name. So Bob Billy or uh, Casey uh, Catherine or uh, Tim Tommy, whoever it is, I like to do the first name just so I know it's a test one. Lead source, where did they come from? I'm just going to pop in some example ones here. Um, okay, I'm going to put in my own, e own email. Maybe we don't know the website, all right? Maybe we're saying this is a really hot lead, so maybe we've contacted them and it all seems to be going really well, they're really interested, uh, and maybe we know their city. Maybe they're based in Auckland, um, in New Zealand. All right, so I'll just save that there. Wonderful, so we've got our practice lead and we want to have a look at what happens when we convert our lead. So we've decided that this is a prospective customer that's worth pursuing or worth talking to some more. So we can move it through these paths up here by clicking on this mark status is complete. And that's gonna take us through these different sections. So you can see I'm just clicking my way through these, but you can also skip or go back by just clicking on the stage that you want to go to and then saying mark that one as the current status. Now we're going to convert this lead. So I'm coming over here to converted. I'm gonna say select that as the converted status. And we're going to see what happens. We get this pop-up, which is this convert lead page. And it can be a lot when you're first looking at it. So let's just break this down. On the left-hand side, we have a create new part of the page, which has got everything that this lead is turning into is created brand new. So it doesn't exist in Salesforce uh, already. We're going to create this brand new. The first thing is an account. And the account is the company. So we just call this example company. Bob Billy works for a very exciting company called Example Company. Uh, and if this doesn't exist already in our Salesforce org, then we would create this new. 
If it did already exist, then you can come over here and click choose existing and then search for it in here. Now, this makes sense because you don't want to have double ups. You want to avoid duplicates as much as you can. Otherwise, you have two example companies. You don't know which one's the right one. It's just going to get really, really messy. So you really want to make sure that you're only having one source of truth for every account, for every customer, for every opportunity. And that's what this, this is really helping us to do. So I know that there's no other company in our Salesforce org called Example Company, but if I wasn't sure, I can always just search for it in here. All right, nothing's coming up, but I could just do a, a bigger search just to double check. So no results for Example Company. So I know I have to create this one brand new. So I'm creating that new. Same with our contact. Okay, so I, I might minimize this one a little bit and then open up my contact. I can choose my salutation, all right, Mr, Ms, Mrs, whatever it is, or none at all. And then first name, last name. Um, if I wanted to, I can always search for Billy, or sorry, Bob Billy in here as well, just to check that this person doesn't already exist in my Salesforce org. If they did, then I would like to just update that existing contact instead of creating a brand new one. And finally, our opportunity, same thing here. I always really encourage people to name the opportunities well. So if you are selling to a business, so a B2B sale, then you might keep the company name in here and then just include a little description of what you're selling. So maybe you're selling um, marketing package number one. <laughs> and then I like to include the month and the year. All right, like this. So that just gives me a little bit of a, a structure to how I name things. And it means that when I'm seeing this in a summary list or in a list view, I can get a good idea of what's involved. So if I'm happy with all of that, then I can go ahead and convert it. And what this conversion process is doing is it's taking my lead and then taking all the different parts of that lead and turning it into a new account, a new contact, and a new opportunity. Now, if I went back, after my lead has been converted and looked for my lead, it's not going to be there anymore. I know you can sort of see it in the background, it's a bit sneaky, but if I went go to leads and looked for my Bob Billy lead, I won't be there because now it's been converted and it exists, instead of a lead, it now exists as an account, a contact and an opportunity. So let's go and check that out. If I look at my accounts first, Then here's my brand new account that I just created for my lead conversion. I called it example company here. And if I go into my details, then I'll be able to see all the details that have been brought over from my lead. Now there's not a lot. I have to say it's a little bit empty. <laughs> the only things that we have in here is my industry that came from my lead. We had the billing address, which I just put in the city, and my rating as well, and of course the account name. So this was all brought over from the lead automatically. We didn't have to do anything. We didn't have to set anything up. It all just came across. Now let's check out our contact. This is our new contact that we created. There we go, Bob Billy. And this contact has done exactly the same thing, right? It's taken over all of that information from the lead. It's even automatically related it to that opportunity that we also created and the account. So if I go into details here, I can see, you know, there's a whole bunch of details here, which I didn't need to enter in again, because when I converted my lead, it just pulled them all across. Name, account name, web, you know, email, all of this beautiful stuff. And then finally, same with my opportunity. All right, I could go and check my opportunity. It's going to be the same sort of scenario. So here's the opportunity. It's got my really good name here, my good title, so I can check that one out. I know what I'm talking about. If I go into details, I can have a look here. Now, what's missing in all of this is our beautiful field that we worked so hard last time to put in. Our coffee order field is gone uh, because we only added it onto the lead. So then when we converted the lead, all of the fields that were standard fields, a standard field means that it was given to us by Salesforce, like, you know, opportunity owner or all of the fields that you see here, we didn't have to add these. They kind of came already with Salesforce, which is really useful. 
Um, but if we add something in, like coffee order, well, Salesforce doesn't know to bring that over, all right, from the lead. So unfortunately, all of our really important coffee order information has gone because we didn't map that field from the lead to where we wanted it to go. So we absolutely need to go ahead and do this so that next time we convert a lead, we're not losing any information. So we can go into our, our leads here, and then we can open up our setup menu, and we're going to just check our lead mapping. Now lead mapping is where we're taking all of our fields from our lead, and we're saying when we convert them, where do we want that information to go? Do we want it to go on the contact? Do we want it to go on the account? Do we want it to go on the opportunity? And we need to make sure that on those objects, the account, the contact, and the opportunity, there's a space for that information to go. So the first thing that I'm actually going to do is in thinking about this coffee order field. Where do I want this coffee order field to go when my lead is converted? Where should that information live? Well, it makes sense that it lives on the contact, right? Because it's not a coffee order for a company and it's not a coffee order for an opportunity. It's a coffee order for that particular person. So I'm in my contact, I'm going into fields and relationships, and I'm going to create exactly the same field, all right? So new here, as I did on the lead for our coffee order, but I'm doing it on the contact so that I have a container that I can take the information from my lead field and then put it in the container on my contact. And we need to make sure it's the same data type. All right, we're gonna choose text area rich. If I chose a number field or something like that, it wouldn't work because then it's trying to put text in a number field. So you've gotta make sure that they're exactly the same type. I even like to try and call them something that's almost exactly the same, um, just so that it's easy for me to understand. And I might say mapped, from lead, but people can always edit this and add their own as well. So I'm just going to go next. Make sure it's visible to yourself, the system admin down here. Next. All right, it's on all of our page layouts, that's beautiful. So then we're going to go ahead and save. And it's always good to check, remember we always want to check that our field was added. So I can go back into my sales app and I might just have a quick look at my contact, make sure that field is there, that it works. All right, going into details, let's have a look. I might need to do a refresh. Although after last time, <laughs> I'm not so sure how fast my refresh is on my current um, Wi-Fi. So hopefully this will work okay. Let's take a look, okay? Related, we're going into details. Fingers crossed. Hey, coffee order. Fantastic. All right, that worked. So we've got our coffee order field on the contact, and we just need to make sure the information from our lead goes over to our contact. Okay. So how do we do that? Great question. Great question, Amber. Glad you asked it. We're going to look in our lead. Do, 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 do. To the lead. And then we're going into fields and relationships because this is all about the fields that we're taking over from the lead. We're going to pull them over and put them for us on our contact. And so we're going to this button, this lovely button in the top right hand corner called Map Lead Fields. Ooh, that one sounds good. I'm excited. <laughs> so here's our mapping of fields, and you can see at the top, it gives us some really good information. It says custom fields, all right? You don't have to worry about mapping any standard fields. Salesforce handles that for you. They've got it. But any custom field that you add, you need to make sure that it's mapped. It is your responsibility. Um, it's me telling them myself as well. Amber, this is your responsibility. So use the tabs to map each of your organization's custom lead fields to one of your custom account, contact, or opportunities fields. These mappings are used when you convert leads to accounts, contacts, and opportunities. Wonderful.
All right, so I'm starting with my lead. I know that I want to map this to my contact. So if I go to my contact, here's my coffee order. And then from this side, I'm just choosing my coffee order from this field. Wonderful. How did it know to get my coffee order in here? Well, it looks for a custom field right, on your contact. And it's looking for a custom field that has the same field type as this field here. All right, so notice that when I go to the next custom field, which is a current generators field, it's got completely different options. And that's because these have a different field type than my coffee order field. So I think these are maybe pick lists. All right, so it's pulling up all the custom pick lists. But for my coffee order field, which is a rich text field, over on this side, it's looking for all of the custom fields on the contact that are of a rich text field type. And it's pulling those, and there's only one, which is the one that I created. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Give myself a bit of a high five. Nice work. And then I want to go and check that that actually worked. So I would go to my lead. I might open up an existing lead just to make this a bit faster. Um, come on, Betty, let's go. All right, and I want to just update the coffee order here and then convert my lead and make sure that that goes through. Perfect. All right, here's my coffee order. What is Betty like? Betty. Um, chai with oat milk. Sounds like something that Betty would like. Save. All right, then we're going to convert our lead, same as before. Converted, select converted status. All right, we're going to whip through this. So we're creating a new account. We're creating a new contact. And then I'm going to put in some more information about the opportunity. Um, I might do this marketing package number two. And remember the month and the year. Always so good to put in. All right, and then we'll convert it. And I'm hoping based on what I've done, that my coffee order field is going to be converted directly from my lead and go into my contact, which I'm just gonna open straight from the screen, and it will have saved that information on the contact. So let's go into details, let's check it out. Scrolling right back to the bottom, and there it is, beautiful. So it's really easy to set this up, but <laughs> you need to make sure that you actually do it because otherwise that information is, is lost, you know? And if you've got some really important custom fields, which you're hoping that every custom field you put in is important in some way, then the information there needs to be kept, all right? So doing this lead mapping is, is really important. So thank you for joining me for our lead mapping session. Uh, it's a really fun challenge. I'm enjoying this jump in jam, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.